Hi, this is Jason Banker from Lumos Consulting, and in this video we will be going over Cisco ACI and F5 Big IP integration using the L4 through L7 managed services. Uh, up on my screen right now, I have a quick design of what we'll be doing today. We will be using a host in the DNZ that will reach to a web bib on 192.168.2.100, the front end of the Big IP. The back end of the Big IP will reach into a web BD with three web hosts serving up a simple HTTP web page just for testing purposes. So we will be, we might periodically look at this design, but this is the design of what we were gonna be accomplishing today. So before we jump into configuration, there is a couple things we need to look at from an ACI uh, standpoint that we already have configured. I have a tenant, um, within that tenant, I have a VRF called production, uh, default settings, we are enforced, we also have two bridge domains, uh, web and DMZ. We will take a look at web, both web and DMZ are flooding, um, which is also in turn art flooding for us. Uh, and we have subnets attached to these for default gateways and testing purposes. If we jump up to the application profile, we do have an application profile called production. And within that we have two EPGs, a DMZ and web, uh, default settings of the EPG, attached to the correct bridge domain, and we do have a virtual a VMM domain attached to this for our host. Uh, we can go ahead and take a look at our big IP. Uh, we have a simple big IP. We've run through the setup, did the licensing, um, assigned a out-of-band management IP. Uh, we have you know our, our normal partitions, um, but this is what we'll be using today, no additional configuration. We can take a look at our big IP um, virtual NIC settings. So let's take a look at that. Uh, we have four network adapters. One is assigned for management. We will be using two and three when we integrate uh, ACI with the F5. So we will come back and take a look at this screen, screen and look at get update, watch it get updated um, after our configuration. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, if we jump into our APIC, what we want to do first is an L4 to L7 device. We're going to go ahead and name it F5 Managed. It is an ADC type. It will be virtual. We have to select our VMM domain. Uh, I've uploaded a device package already, F5 Big IP. Uh, the model will be VE Generic. We are single context aware. Our connectivity is out of band. We need some credentials, the F5. Uh, we need to assign our management IP address. We are using HTTPS, and we need to select the VM we were just taking a look at. So let's go ahead and select JSON F5. Okay, in this next section, this is where we correlate our um, F5 NICs, not NICs, but F5 um, interfaces with vNICs. So um, one underscore one will be We'll be using two and three. We won't be supplying a path. We will be doing no routing. Uh, 1.2 is going to be assigned to network three. We can go ahead and update that. We do want our cluster interfaces. This is where we will uh, give the system consumer and provide. So we have a consumer. We are going to name this interface DMZ, and we are going to use 1.1 one, one for the connectivity. Go ahead and update. If we go into provider, we want to name this one web, and we will be using one, two. We can update, should look good. Uh, this next section, we would be doing high availability or clustering, which we are not, so we are just going to finish. And if we go ahead and take a look at our F5 managed device, um, we will look at the state. We run through init, auto pending, and then you should see stable. This is the normal. Uh, a way ACI brings up the service graphs, so we should come to stable. We'll give it a second, there we go, stable. So now uh, our next step is to create a service graph. So if we go into service graph template, we give it a name, we're gonna go DMZ to web, F5. We are gonna drag our load balancer over, we'll just name this big IP. We want it to be two arm. 
we are going to use a basic virtual server profile and we are going to submit. So after we submit our service graph template, we need to apply it. So what we'll do is we'll apply. We need to provide our consumer and provider EPGs. So our consumer is DMZ, our provider is web. We need to create a new contract. So we'll just go ahead and call this permit any F5. This is just giving us a contract to allow all traffic to make it flow through the F5. So we'll go ahead and do next. Brings up a screen. We can see our consumer and provider connectors. We can make sure they are correct. We have DMZ as consumer and web as um, provider. It looks correct. Next. This is where we will be doing all of our parameters for the F5 itself. Um, this is going to be a little tedious, but is necessary in order to get correct traffic throw through the F5. So. Uh, first, we're going to go to local traffic. Every time I go into a setting, I have to update. When it turns green, we are uh, that service has now been turned on. What we're going to do first is we're going to turn on monitoring. We are going to give it a frequency of five seconds. We are going to give the monitoring protocol. We'll use ICMP for this test, and we'll trigger. We really use the, we'll use five for failure. Um, so monitoring is complete. We now need to go into our pool. This is where we'll create our members. So we will go ahead. We will do. We'll name this Web Server One. We'll update. We will go ahead and give it a member port. The IP address of our first member is 1.10. We will update. Uh, we want to go ahead and create another one. So we do have three available. We are only going to do two to start. So we have our member. We're going to go to our port, port 80. And our member IP address will be 192.168.1.11. Both members should be created. Let's go ahead and close those. We want to go ahead and turn on our pool monitor. We will update. We're going to select our pool monitor. It is our local traffic monitor we just created. We want our load balancing method. For this test, we'll do simple round robin. And our pool type is going to be static. So we have that configured. Uh, now we need to jump into network. We're going to update it. We want to go into our external IP. We are going to name our external interface DMZ. We'll update. We will not have floating. Our external IP will be 192.168.2.250. Flash 24. We'll go ahead and do the same for internal. We will name it web. Open it up. No floating. 192.168.1.250. Our mask again is going to be a 24. No port lockdown. We won't be doing any routing. Uh, we do need to go into our listener. Listener default cannot be there, so we're just going to name it listener. We will update that setting. Uh, what we want to do first is assign our protocol, port 80 TCP. We will use TCP. Uh, we are not going to do any source information. We will have to give our address to our VIP. We will do 192.168.1. Uh, excuse me, 2.100. Looks good. Update our mask is just going to be a slash 32. Done there. Our virtual service port will be 80. Our network relationship, we will update it. We will select network, only one option. Uh, we will go into our pools, turn on our pool. We need to select our pool and web server. Our, our live pool. Just verify that our pool type was named 
cool. Okay, we didn't name it web server. Great. Um, so we're going to go ahead and update that. This should be everything we need to configure. So we'll go ahead and hit finish. <clears throat> In some cases, you will need to come hit submit, um, but we, we don't need to. It should be um, our deployed devices. This is pretty important. If you go under deployed devices and you look at your virtual device ID, this is the number of the partition that's going to get created on the big IP. So we have 215. If we go ahead and look, take a look at our F5 settings. We should see port groups automatically updated from the F5, uh, excuse me, from the APIC. Um, we take a look. You can see we have our DMZ web so configuration looks great. Uh, we can jump back into our virtual servers. It is up. Our pool list is green, and our nodes should be looking good. Okay, so what we can do is we can go run a quick test to see if our um, device is working correctly. So we want to go into our uh, our DMZ host. We'll log in. I do have a simple test running already. Um, we're going to hit refresh a couple times. You see it's bouncing through 10 and 11, um, which is great. So we are showing that we do have traffic flow. We can go back into the F5. We can take a look at statistics. Not what I wanted. We can look at our traffic summary. Uh, we can look at local traffic, and we can see our virtual servers are up. We can look at our virtual servers. We can see that we are getting hit. Um, we are getting traffic in and out. Uh, we can look at our pools. Um, so we can tell that we have traffic. So we do have a third um, web server we can use. So let's go ahead and implement that. So what we want to do is go into our application profile, and we want to go to the provider, which was web, and go to the L4 through L7 service parameters. I do a lot of work in this APIC, uh, so we will see um, quite a bit of different contracts in and out. But if we come here and edit, uh, the only one that should be available to us is what we just created. So we'll go ahead and select that. Uh, we want to go to all parameters. Let's go to all. So we want to go into our device config. We want to look up um, our pool. We have our two members. We want to go add an additional third member. All right, we want to come in, say your port 80. Come to address 192.168.1.12. We'll update uh, that simple we're going to submit submit changes we will go into our big uh, IP we'll go into local traffic we will look at our nodes uh, we do we have a third member now so let's go ahead and see if we can run through the web pages and see if that has joined as it has so we have 12 10 10 11 12 right so we simply added another member and uh, we have a Nice working F5 within our fabric uh, using the L4 through L7. Thanks a lot, and talk to you next time.